All right, everyone, it's time for some tough love here. Uh, because they've got an article, uh, they made a new, like, a uh, documentary sort of movie about the white rhinoceros. There are only two left in the entire world. They've been trying to use uh, implantation, surrogacy with other rhinos in order to try to save the species, but it's not really working. Uh, they've They've tried this on a number of embryos, and none of them have actually been successful. It is now effectively inevitable that the white rhino is going to be completely extinct, probably within the next 20 years or so. There is probably no methodology by which to bring them back. Now, if you take enough genetic samples, you may be able to de-extinct them, of course. Uh, we're, I mean, we're working on the dire wolf and things like that that uh, you know, passed away at large tens of thousands of years ago. So I think that you could probably take a fairly recent species, like uh, they're doing this with the Tasmanian tiger too. Take a fairly recent species, you'll have better genetic samples and more of them. Um, it, 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 you know, you could literally be working on this as we speak right now, creating like uh, white rhinos. There's one other problem though, and this is something that people are not really mentioning. The genetic material that you have, like the eggs that were removed from the adult female rhino, because again, both of the remaining survivors are female, and one is the daughter of the other rhino, so uh, wouldn't that necessitate significant amounts of inbreeding? Unless you intend to uh, have exonomy going on, and exogamy, sorry. Uh, if you uh, do that, and you hybridize them with maybe some other rhino subspecies, okay, well then you can have a little bit more genetic diversity, but it's not the original white rhino. So this uh, happens sometimes. The fact is that poor management by African nations, compounded by a love for hunting among certain colonial groups, uh, drove the white rhino effectively to at least endangered status a hundred years ago. They breed very slowly, and they don't always have a lot of children. Um, it, it takes a ponderous amount of time for rhinoceri to mate and create little rhinos, and many of them die in childhood. It's a species, ultimately, that evolution has selected for removal more than anything else. And it is not entirely through human endeavors that this was made possible. The species is simply slow and lumbering and incapable of restocking its ranks because there were always few of them. They simply don't breed fast enough. The reason why they managed to survive as a species for so long is because they're built like tanks, so once they reach a certain size, they don't really have any uh, opponents that are capable of standing against them. A group of hyenas trying to bite a rhino. I don't even know that they can penetrate the skin. Um, so unless that rhino is sick and falling over and, you know, pretty much ready to die anyway, uh, there are no natural predators. It's like that old, uh, that old, uh, elephant versus rhino thing. That old meme. I don't know if there's ever been actually a fight between the two of them. I don't think so. Oh no, I guess if the rhino managed to run in and jam its horn up into the, uh, elephant's, uh, rib cage first, probably the rhino would win as the elephant would bleed out, but, uh, otherwise... I grab the rhino around the neck with its trunk and strangulate it, and uh, you know, without the charge, uh, the rhino, I think, would lose. Anyway, totally off subject. Well, mostly. The extinction is inevitable. We need to brace ourselves to the fact that the older white rhino will die, and its daughter will straggle on for some decades, sad and alone, with literally no other living creature of its species on the planet. And this is really my problem with de-extinction as well. My problem with de-extinction is that a lot of people seem to approach it as sort of, oh, we're going to bring back a woolly mammoth. Wow, that's going to be great for our zoo or something like that. We're going to bring back a saber-toothed tiger and put it in the, uh, the, the nature uh, reservation or something. But it'll be alone. It won't have anything else to talk to. It won't have any other creature to actually interact with, by the way, when you de-extinct. Uh, let's say that you use an elephant surrogate for a woolly mammoth. That's great. It'll be inculcated into uh, elephant culture. It's not going to be the original behavioral pattern of the woolly mammoth. It will resemble it. It will look similar. It'll have similar traits. It's really cool. I love science, and not in the I fucking love science sense, which is 
mostly pseudoscience and bullshit. Um, you know, you basically, you know, people who watch uh, that show where he says Bazinga or some shit like that. I can't even remember the name of it. Never watched a full episode. I just thought that it was cringe bullshit myself. If I want to watch autistic people uh, on uh, on a sitcom, I'll watch Monk, the defective detective. Trust me. But the extinction is here. It's it's inevitable that the species is going to be no longer. When you de-extinct things, though, please bring back a number of different specimens, preferably having tinkered with their genetics and they're not completely inbred. Because otherwise, imagine that the uh, last rhino, you take its genetic material and start cloning it. Okay, that's all well and good. If its genetics are good, then you don't really have to worry about inbreeding. Believe it or not, inbreeding in and of itself, if you have a genetically healthy starting population, is not in and of itself a problem. The problem is if you have any sort of flaw within that genetics of any note, of course, is a difference between having smaller than normal ears and having a congenital heart malfunction. Uh, the survivability level is decreased a little bit more with one than the other. We'll put it that way. Believe it or not, inbreeding, even severe inbreeding in and of itself, is not the deleterious problem. The problem is you're compacting any negative recessive traits that happen to be there and making it more likely that they are passed on to the next generation. This is why typically in highly inbred populations, you have a host of health issues, physical deformities, uh, organ problems, slow mentality, stuff like that. That's the problem that you run into. So unless this last surviving rhino is genetically perfect, effectively, you're going to give rise to a, effectively a very sick population of heavily inbred white rhinos that had to originally been born by surrogates and may not survive long anyway. You know, genetics will cut them down. Predators will cut them down. These two rhinos are guarded 24-7 by, by armed mercenaries just to prevent them from being poached. Can you imagine how valuable one of those horns would be? Oh yeah, this is the uh, second to last white rhino horn that can ever literally be harvested in the history of mankind. It's probably worth quite a bit of money. There's a good impetus for people to want to pour in and uh, shoot these bastards and then uh, maybe they'll eat the meat too. I'm surprised that somebody hasn't gotten like a jihad gang going and uh, just piled in and just shot the soldiers that are guarding them and said, well, that sucks to be you. And then they uh, enjoy a feast and then they carry off the horns and live uh, happily ever after. We need to, though, uh, get used to the fact that the white rhino is going to go extinct fairly soon. Because both members are female and because the attempts to use extracted eggs have generally failed, there's really not a whole lot more than we can do. Uh, it's it's just impossible. Their numbers were probably thinning before, you know, Westerners. The, the whole goal, the whole idea in history is to say, well, things would have been fine if only these Europeans hadn't arrived. They were already being hunted by the so-called native population. Um, and so they would have gone extinct at some point. You didn't need European diaspora to extinct the giant ground sloth or the saber-toothed cat, or the cave bear. They were endemic in other parts of the world as well. They were still hunted. They eventually went extinct, along with most other megafauna. There was an evolutionary reason for this. Rhinoceri are one of the few holdovers from, effectively, the sub-megafaunal era, along with elephants that are intelligent enough so that they're a little bit more survivable. There's no reason to believe that rhinoceri have a significantly advanced mental capacity. Um, sad, but, you know, this happens. It's called evolution. Things change. I thought I would think progressives would be in favor of this. Well, it's progress. Species just can't cut it. Has been weeded out of existence. It forms no particular significant backbone within its ecosystem. We know this because there's only two of them and the ecosystem hasn't fallen apart and humans hunted them, and so now they're doomed. That's basically the long and short of it. Have a good day. That's about all. <laughs> Peace out.